good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the Freelance Mum podcast with myself, Faye Dicker, and we've got our money life coach, Fanny Snaith. And in case you haven't spotted it, two possibly of the most awesome names ever, but we must never, or perhaps we definitely ought to get married yes. and become Fanny Dicker. Are really you going to Faye Snaith? I could be Faye Snaith. Or Faye Fanny, Fanny Faye, Snaith Dicker, <laughs> Fanny. This, sure. I mean, Fanny Dicker is yeah. awesome. Yeah. We need to do something around that. Anyway, mm. it's just lovely to speak to you, Fanny. Thank you so much for turning up um, for our podcast today. If anyone who's new to Freelance Mum, and let me just remind you that Freelance Mum is child-friendly networking for mums and, and dads, that matter, in business. And if you want to come and try us out for free for 30 days, please do check us out in our Facebook group, The Mothership, and we've got networks all across the country. First of all, Fanny, uh, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, you for are... Yeah, you're awesome for a start. We've had some blooming amazing conversations off air. You're already making me smile a lot. We've not even got started. Money life coach. And we're yeah. talking about how to make money your friend. Yeah. Can you tell me, first of all, I've got so yeah. many thoughts. What is a money life coach? Are you kind of out there with the IFAs? The, no. no. You're, are you a life coach? Where do you sit between the two? Okay, so for the first of all, an, an IFA is somebody who learns about products and services um, and planning, future planning. Mm -hmm. And I'm not allowed to sell any products. Mm -hmm. And that's probably the one thing that I'm most proud of. Mm -hmm. So for anybody who approaches me to talk about money, I will not be selling them any products. Oh, it feels so great. <laughs> so, and, I'm, and, I'm, and also on top of that, I've never, ever worked in financial services either. Right. So for me, I've always been interested in money. I'm also a big numerology lover. And mm -hmm. if I look at my numerology, which is like the study of numbers, I'm an eight life path. Mm -hmm. um, all of that is about the bar balance of spiritual and material wealth and abundance and power and all that kind of stuff and getting it all aligned. And I, if I look at my, my money story, which is something I work with my clients with, um, I've just had this sort of roller coaster of a life, but money's always seemed to have been the central pin. So I, when I, I basically help people to treat money, their money life as a financial adventure rather than a bothersome burden. Because I know a lot of people just go, oh, you know, money's, oh my God, it's so short. I haven't got any. Oh, we've got to spend it on this. We've got to do. It. And it's all a bit of a Ugh, like this. I like to try and turn people's lives around to make it all very exciting. And I'm not talking, though, uh, Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. I'm talking more <laughs> Indiana Jones, right? So running down corridors with fireballs <laughs> facing you and diving into nests of vipers and things like that. So the idea is people come to me and they go, I'm rubbish with money. Now, yeah. from my experience as myself and from coaching many, many, many people now, this is the umbrella term for saying I have got a very interesting relationship with money and my interesting relationship with money prevents me from sitting down and joining my financial adventure because I can't do a budget, which I call a money map. map mm -hmm. adventure. I can't track my spending, which I call the compass. I don't even want to talk about it, which is all about the mindset, being motivated. And to even think about a, de a destination, I'm never, ever going to think that I can be wealthy because I'm trying to make a decision from here and now. And I feel resigned to be like this for the rest of my life. You you remind me, as you talk, you remind me in lots of ways of um, my 20s where oh. I'm very, I'm not, by the way, I'm not saying in um, in money that I've vastly improved, but it reminds me of, I was very hapless in love in my 20s, a bit Bridget Jones-esque, and nice. to be excellent at having a, of kissing a lot of toads and frogs, yes, basically. Yes, yes. Yes. And I feel that some money relationships can be very similar to that. And yes. it's almost, you can send yourself up with it, but actually deep seated inside, yes. you're not very happy. Yes. And there's also, a there, oh, there can be, a bit of a guilt association with spending money. You, you can feel a bit, bit. You know, oh, 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 yeah. I talk about if we're talking if we're going to launch straight into the emotions with money um I talk about getting people off the fags mm -hmm. which is uh, the main emotions that come up for me when I'm talking will come up for people when they're talking about money which is fear anger or anxiety guilt and shame mm 
the fags. So we try and get off the fags. But seriously, though, um, there's so much I'm rubbish with money or money just slips through my fingers. Um, I can't afford this. I mean, you, we all we all heard all the messages, right? But the simple fact is everything that we do is linked with money. You can't even go for a walk mm. without spending money unless you're going to go naked. You've got to wear clothes, right? Yeah. And you've got to buy those. You can choose where you're going to buy them from. You can have your, is it Hunter Wellies? Or mm-hmm. you can get some from the local store. So there's all those kind of things about how we value things and what's cheap, what's expensive, what's good value for money. Then we've got looking at other people. Oh, am I, how are they? How, what am I doing? You know, all the comparison. Mm-hmm. And then we've got all the things that we got from mum and dad or the people that the carers that brought us up. And they can be extremely conflicting. I know my parents' messages that they gave me were like, chalk and cheese Mm. so we grow up in this world and it's like then we don't learn about it at school we Mm. don't learn any practical finance anything to do with the psychology of money with this one thing this energy this tool that every single one of us has Mm. in our lives 24 hours a day 365 days a year it's crazy Mm. absolutely crazy and yet and then we can go to you know we go we go to an independent financial advisor, <laughs> which is all very well, but they aren't going to want to speak to you if you've if you've only got 20 grand to invest. Mm. They're certainly not going to want to speak to you if you say, can you help me get out of debt? Mm. Um, you could go, you're not going to go to an accountant, are you, to talk about your finances, really, mm-hmm. especially if you're in a in a job. Mm-hmm. So who have you who have you got? And that's where a money coach comes in. And the thing is, is that when we start talking about money. It, it's rarely about the money. Mm. In fact, it's never about the money. It's always about the relation. Eventually, the relationship that we have with ourselves that we then pin on money. And I know that from personal experience. That's fascinating. So it's about our personal relationship that we have with money. Yeah. And so I, tell you how I know that. Yeah, do. Because when I started as a money coach back in 2015, all I'd done is I'd invented this spreadsheet doesn't look as good as it does now by the way um i invented this spreadsheet and i would say right here i am a money coach didn't know anything about marketing and sales by the way just assumed the phone would ring so i was doing my my business like a lot of people do when we start we try and run it by telepathy yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work anyway so people i have clients starting to come and work with me and they would be quite wealthy you know in good jobs paying good money and yet, and they're probably managing big budgets at work. And yet when it comes home, they're not doing anything with their personal finances at all. They don't even, they don't know what, they have no clarity around it at all, which is obviously the, the very first step. Mm. So I'd sit with them with my limited knowledge that I had, thinking that I was the best person in the world with money at the time. Oh my God, how untrue that was. Mm-hmm. And I would sit down and start teaching them how to manage their money on a practical mm-hmm. level. And they'd sit there and they'd just go, <laughs> well they might some of them started to cry mm. and, I, and then I was thinking hmm this isn't about putting numbers in boxes is it this is about what's going on up here because actually to manage your money well on a practical level is easy mm-hmm. piddly easy I won't swear because we've got children in the room but it's it's easy really it's 20 percent mm. Mm -hmm. of what you need to know the most important bit is up here because it's actually your mindset that's stopping you Mm -hmm. from managing your money because most people don't manage their money and get it wrong Mm -hmm. that doesn't often happen does it Mm -hmm. most people either don't do it or they do so when you say most people manage their money and they don't get it wrong do you physically mean you go to the shop and you think oh I'm going to have a latte and you know I'm going to treat my friends as well I'm going to have a latte we're going to have two lattes and you go into you know, you don't even get cash out anymore or you get your phone whatever it is you're going to pay we know how to physically make that transaction we're, we're good at transactions we're good at buying mm-hmm. we're good at spending mm-hmm. like we've got that yeah we've, we've got that but actually mm-hmm. it gets to the end of the month and even more so as freelancers because it's a very lumpy cash flow mm-hmm. you're like how have I run out again how's mm-hmm. that happened again that's so, because you're living your financial life on the back foot rather than the front foot. Right. 
So if you think about it, so when people talk about the word budget, you don't mind the word bud budget. You know, I wouldn't have guessed, Fanny. So I'm no, glad you pointed that out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when people talk about the word budget, it sort of sounds all restrictive and a bit sort of crampy. So because I like to talk about a financial adventure, I call my my map. So the first thing you do is you map out your money. Map right? out your money. So if anybody wants a bit of a ha handy hint and tip, there is an app called Money Dashboard. Have you heard of it? No, I've not. Okay. So Money Dashboard is the best thing since sliced bread. Mm -hmm. I have worked, I've actually worked with Money Dashboard only because I've been using it so much that I actually went and asked them if they wanted to do some collaboration. And they said yes, but I do not get paid by Money Dashboard. There's no kickback or anything, except if you get a little link from me, to join mm -hmm. and you join one of your accounts we both get a four pound amazon voucher oh funny how exciting Hello. <laughs> Hello. well you must put your link in the comments in a minute then oh, i will because four will. pounds will go quickly on amazon i know mm -hmm. anyway so money dashboard is brilliant because what it does is it shows all your transactions in one place doesn't matter what how many bank accounts you've got or how many credit cards you put you can put them all in and it shows all your transactions and you can tag them mm -hmm. to categories and they actually have some categories and you can tag them now that's your compass mm -hmm. your money map is you take the categories from money dashboard personal care bills shopping which is clothes and things like that uh, transport mm -hmm. holidays giving they're all there Mm -hmm. And you start, if you work with me one-to-one -one or come on one of my courses, I provide you with this amazing spreadsheet, which is called Money Map. But for those of you, until I entice you in, um, you'll have to make up your own. So you get your categories and then you list down per month what you spend in on everything, mm -hmm. so giving every single pound a purpose. Now, if you're freelance, you're going to have to work backwards. I'm freelance. My husband's freelance. Been, I've, free, I've been freelance for 21 years now. Mm -hmm. So you have to work backwards. You have to work out what you need, and then you go out and you earn that. Mm -hmm. It's very, very motivating, actually. Mm -hmm. So you write down, okay, well, I'm going to spend, uh, how much do I spend at the hairdressers every year? Oh, what do you mean every year? Well, I just go when I go, and then I have to try and find the money to pay for it. No, no, no. What we do is we say, I go to the hairdressers twice a year, let's say, and it costs 40 quid a time, 40 quid a time, 80 quid, 80 quid divided by 12, whatever that is. I'm now going to set that money aside every month so that when I go to the hairdressers, the money is there. Mm -hmm. And we do it with Christmas, too. So you said before we went online, you said January is a difficult month. People are recovering from Christmas. Mm. We don't need to recover from Christmas. That's the last thing we want to recover from. What we do is we work out how much money, and this is really good, this is in January, we work out how much money we spent at Christmas, divide it by 12, and start in January setting the money aside. Mm -hmm. One of the ladies on my course, the Loving Me, Loving My Money course, which is just for ladies, that she finished it at Christmas 2019. Mm -hmm. Do you know, 2020. And I bumped into her, um, in between Christmas and New Year, she called Bonnie, and I bumped into her, and she said, "Fanny, I am so glad I bumped into you. Your I've been running the money map for a year now, so it's the full year since I finished the course." She said, "I cannot tell you what this Christmas has been like. Every month, I put aside a hundred pounds to to have for Christmas. Got to Christmas, December, I had twelve hundred pounds in there. The whole of my the whole." feeling mentality around Christmas this year is different because everything was done with joy oh because I didn't have to find anything yeah and actually she underspent so she had some extra money slooshing around in January she didn't have, she didn't have any money slooshing we don't do okay. slooshing oh, okay Just we don't have any murky pots right every single pound a purpose Every single pound. Every single pound needs to have a purpose. Every single pound needs to have a job. You're the boss. They are your workers. Okay. Or your army to protect you, your foot soldiers. Mm -hmm. Don't leave them sitting around idle. You want every pound to be working for you. Mm -hmm. So that money goes into January's pot or it goes into top up her investments. Nice. So 
going back to it, we've got categories, personal care bills, da, 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 list all the things out. But then the, the piece de resistance is to think about how you spend. Mm -hmm. And I have, there are three ways. You've got everyday spending, which mm -hmm. is things like coffees, petrol, the things that you can, you know roughly how much you're going to spend, but you're not quite sure. And you want that money to be available to you when you go into the shop to go like that, right? Yep. So you don't want to start thinking about, oh, I'm at the grocery store. I need to get some money out of savings to pay for my groceries. That's just silly. So we keep that money available for you in the everyday savings pot. Mm -hmm. Then we have the automated savings, which is a separate account where we have all our standing orders, direct debits, bill, uh, any all those naughty subscriptions that show mm -hmm. up on a credit card. Mm -hmm. We put all of those in there. So we put money in there every month so you know that all your bills are going to get covered. Mm -hmm. And then we have called the sometimes spending pot, which is your Christmas, birthdays, holidays, maybe your car insurance if you pay annually, which I hope you do because mm -hmm. it's good. And I hope you always get your quote 23 days before your quote is up mm -hmm. because you can get up to a 20% discount on that day. Mm -hmm. That's a good tip. Didn't know that. Funny. Thank you. Around 23 days. If you just don't leave, don't phone up too soon, too much before. And don't phone up a few days before your car is going. Just put it in your Google Calendar or your iCal, whatever you have. Funny Apple people. And put it in there and just get your insurance quote and see what happens. And it's lower. 20% lower. 23 days. 20% lower. The, the the wonderful website that everybody should get the email from every week, which is um, Martin Lewis's moneysavingexpert.com. He talks a lot about this. Ah, that's, that's a great. Now, I didn't know that one. And I'm glad you mentioned it because we have in our household, um, it's around October. It's possibly one of the most expensive times of the year for us because it's when the house insurance, the car, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. the MOT, professional memberships, yeah, everything comes up and there's birthdays. October Nightmare. is it's a really spendy month. Um, You've got a real cash flow spike. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah, and that's October. And it's not long before then you've got November. And then guess what? There's this great big festival that takes place in December. Yeah. So it's you know, it is January's horrible for you. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. yeah well, okay, so what about if you set yourself a goal now? that next January is not mm -hmm. going to be horrible for you. Yes, please. So just by starting to get your or get your budget sorted out, the budget or budget. That's better, out. thank you. Yeah. yeah, to get your money mapped out yeah. so that you can start start setting money aside. The um, If you want to use the money mapping system at its best, I tell you, if you compare it with, so not compare, can pair, Mm -hmm. C-A-N-P-A-I-R, not C-O-M-P-A-R-E. Yeah. If you use Money Dashboard mm -hmm. and list out your map on an Excel spreadsheet or a piece of paper mm -hmm. or however you want to do it, or join one of my courses, and <laughs> then um, use Starling Bank. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm recommending it, of course, but I use it. Because mm -hmm. Starling Bank, one of these new challenger banks, you have your current account and then you're allowed to have these things called spaces. Mm -hmm. so you've got let's say you've got your main current account and you you can set up a pot for professional membership one mm -hmm. right which is going to be 1200 quid mm -hmm. in or, uh, why don't we do a thousand pounds in october mm -hmm. you know that you've got to save a hundred pounds mm -hmm. from january to october in order to pay it mm. so you set up a little space mm -hmm. for professional membership number one and then you put a hundred pounds in there every month mm. And come October, it's there. And you can have up to 100 of these little spaces. That's very clever. And it doesn't show up in the main the main amount of your, your current account, yeah. So when you're looking at your money online, you're yeah. not getting this overall, oh, whoopee-doo, look at this, that's amazing, yeah. actually, which is it, which is a bit unrealistic yeah. because it's yeah. not taking into account, yes. Yeah, because so all, all of this, if you think about it, all of this, all you're doing is you're putting your money into little pots. Mm. You know, people used to do, when we had cash, people used to do what was called the envelope method. You know, they used to get yes. the money out of the month and just put them in different envelopes. It's exactly the same, only you're doing it digitally. 
Now, I have to tell you this story, Fanny, and I know you like to talk, but I want to tell you this story because oh. I used to work with someone, I love the way you lean in, who knew that she couldn't live within her means so um, and knew that she would need £10 at the end of the week. So at the beginning of the week, she'd put that cash in an envelope and she'd post it to herself. And she knew that she wouldn't then spend the money and that the £10 would arrive in the post on Friday, which I actually quite like that system. No, <laughs> It's quite cute, really. But I mean, seriously, can you not just get a grip on yourself and actually get some self-trust? I, I'd be working on self-trust with her, really. Yeah. We are talking a long time ago, Fanny. We're talking yeah. about 20 years. Also, and I don't know how to be putting money in the post these days. No, no. We're talking a long time ago. Times have changed. Mm. But I thought, actually, that was okay. quite... You know, we were kind of like post students, um, mm. young twenties. I actually thought yeah. that was quite a sophisticated yeah. and a very simplistic way of doing although, it. Although... I don't know how much the stamp was then, but she was actually yeah. losing money by, you know. Mm. Like sort of I, I liked I liked the system. I didn't do the system. <laughs> but you liked but, it. Uh, but I liked it. No, I liked to up to it. Are you a bit of a voyeur when it comes to looking at managing your money? So by that, do you mean I will observe how other people manage their money? Mm, but don't implement it yourself. Oh, gosh. Bits and pieces. There are... I, don't, I hate it. I don't, I don't, I don't actually, when I'm, if I don't do it on a regular basis and I have to say, I have to say in, at this particular juncture in my life, I don't manage the minutiae, mm. um, but don't, don't get me wrong. I did for, for like ages. I now know we, we, the way I, we run our finances is we have a Starling bank account for joint we have pots around the outside and then we buy everything on a credit card, mm -hmm. which gives us points. It's an Amazon credit card. And then we just pay it all off at the end of the month. So I monitor what's going on the credit card. And I can, t I, I just, because I've been doing it for years, I just know. Mm. It's a bit like when you know when you've eaten too much, you know? <laughs> yeah. Or not eaten enough, whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. So what about um, when you're at a point, and we've all been there, um, <laughs> we're actually you're just not living within your means try yeah. as you might with the best will and the best intention it's just not happening you know yeah. you um your income unless you're going to seriously generate more money and that's not happening either for whatever for whatever reason life is throwing at you yeah. um let's just say the cost of living is one thousand pounds a month and you're earning 750 there's a shortfall and that shortfall is only increasing and adding up and ganging up on you and by the end of the year it's just you know it's wind space time how do you recover from that situation what would you advise so we've already got there have we yes that's where we're all at right. we've been in denial for a few months we think it's we think, oh it's all right we'll be okay i'm not i don't need to think about it so but we've been doing it for 12 months now well the thing is you, you so are you saying to me Faye, that the person that's coming to me that's got say Three thousand six hundred pounds in debt, which would be three hundred pounds over for twelve months a year, mm -hmm. and I didn't even get a maths GCSE. I could just work that out all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you telling me that they have really tried budgeting, that they have budgeted, and there's nothing else that they can cut? Because when you say with the best will in the world, and they can't earn more money, I would have to stand here. Mm. Um, and say that's a very rare occurrence. I suppose we're okay. Perhaps a better comparison is um, I mean, a lot of freelance mums, there's a lot of freelance mums in the mothership, and actually, they've got childcare commitments, they've got limited time. Yeah. There's XYZ is going out on a lot of life, you know, yeah. um, and these things come with a price tag. Yeah. Um, and if you're lucky, you're covering your bases. But yeah. possibly more realistically, and you're trying to keep your name out there professionally. Yeah. But possibly more realistically, you're you're about there's going to be a short there's there's probably a shortfall, and it's not a nice place to be. No. But it is a place that a lot of people unfortunately find themselves in. Yeah. So, and you you know, so I'm just saying, how do you recover from that? Okay, so you recover. From, so the first thing is, is that you have to have complete and utter clarity around mm -hmm. your finances. If you already have that, then that's fine. If you are racking up debt month on month, and you you know that the figures won't work out, you're claiming all the benefits that you can get if you can get benefits. Mm -hmm. And you really have spoken to all of your friends um, to find out to just say, can I have a bit of a 
a conversation about how I can earn more money because I right now I can't think of anything and I just mm-hmm. wonder if I can if anybody can think outside the box so like for instance I was delivering a workshop not so long ago with people who are you know they're on they consider themselves to be in very hard times and some of them are long-term unemployed so it's difficult it can be very difficult and this lady said to me she goes she goes well it's all very well for you Fanny you know, you're standing there telling us how to save money and put money aside, put money aside for Christmas now. I can't even pay for food. on. I, I can't even pay for what I've got now this month. Mm. And I said, OK, I said, what do you do? She said, I'm um, I'm a special educational needs teacher mm-hmm. at a primary school. She said, I've been doing it for 16 years and I I haven't had a pay rise, a decent pay rise in years and I'm saying the pro- cost of living's going up, and here I am trying to pay for things, blah 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 blah. And I said, I said, I said, okay, I get it. I hear, I hear you. So I said, so how many children would you say that you've looked after in 16 years? And she said, God, I don't know. I said, well, I don't know. What, let, when you, let's think about it. It's 30, 40. She goes, oh yeah, more than that. Mm-hmm. I said, so you're an expert at what you do, right? And she goes, oh yeah, I suppose so. I said, most parents will have only one special ed- educational needs children child maybe maybe two so they're only going to have experience of that whereas you've got experience of all of these children mm-hmm. and all of these children that have come to the school space mm-hmm. as well so how they deal with school you know etc cetera, etc cetera. I said you've got like a whole feast mm-hmm. of information that you can offer to parents what about you wrote a little ebook and started to send it out to mm-hmm. organizations what about you started to do some private tutoring and all that kind of stuff and that's what she's doing now. And she's, you know, she's upped her, upped her income. Mm-hmm. Because look, at the end of the day, there is no magic wand. Mm-hmm. It's more, you know, like Charles Dickens said, I can't quote the book exactly, but the figures are roughly, if you earn £10,000 a year and you're spending 9999 mm-hmm. everything's fine. If you're earning £5 million a year mm-hmm. and you're spending £5 million and a penny, mm-hmm. you're going to year on you're going to go into debt mm. right so it doesn't you you need to make those figures match somewhere mm. and yes sometimes we have to make real sacrifices mm. sometimes we have to not have netflix and we can't have deliveroo and mm. we can't have amazon prime and it, you know it's hard don't get me wrong and i might be speaking here from somebody who is who is a wealthy woman now but back when i was 10 years old coming from a wealthy family we lost all of our money overnight we went from like near like from wealthy to like totally poor Mm -hmm. i went one week being in a lovely posh boarding school to standing in the free school meals queue at the local comprehensive Mm -hmm. i i know what i have i have been there Mm -hmm. actually you know i have been there and it's you know and i know it's not pleasant but if everything's not adding up there is always a way mm-hmm. so if there are a bit like for instance if you've run up a credit card debt mm-hmm. another tip write this down if you really can't pay the minimum mm-hmm. payment first of all i would never advise anybody to pay the minimum payment mm-hmm. because oh, if you have a three grand credit card and you have and you pay the minimum payment mm-hmm every month it's going to take you about 26 years and nine months to pay it off and you're going to pay about four grand in interest on top of your three Mm. if you pay let's say for instance this month uh, Faye you paid the minimum payment Mm -hmm. and you you stopped using the credit card and you carried on paying that minimum payment that amount Mm -hmm. so let's say it's 61 pounds 50 and you carried on paying 61 pounds 50 every month it will cut the time down for you to pay Mm -hmm. it off from 26 years to five. Wow. And instead of paying four grand interest, you'll pay about one and a half. Wow. If anybody is in um, credit card debt and they are not sure what to do, mm-hmm. there is a, a clause in the um, I can't remember, the credit agreement mm-hmm. as it goes on, which says that the credit card companies cannot force you to pay the money back. Mm-hmm. You need to negotiate this. You will. You need to navigate this quite carefully. Mm-hmm. However, there is a way that what you can do is you can phone them up and just get yourself put on a, a five pound direct debit every month. It's going mm-hmm. to affect your credit score. I can tell you that now. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll be put on five pounds 
a month mm-hmm. and it will give you breathing space. My recommendation is, is if you do go down that route, number one is to find somebody on YouTube called mm-hmm. Oye, E-O-Y-E. Just go, just go into O-Y, O-Y, sorry. O-Y-E. His sorry. name is Oye and he is an absolute master mm-hmm. of this stuff. And um, if you just look at OYE debt, it'll come up. He's a wonderful, wonderful guy. I interviewed him and um, yeah, we got to know each other. But the way that it works, if you run up a credit card debt, what will happen eventually is you get get it put on this five pounds a month. My my recommendation would be is to carry on, keep paying, but pay yourself. So what you're doing is you're building up a wadge of cash and I'll tell you why now. Eventually what will happen is that the company that you've got the credit card with are going to get pissed off, sorry, peed off. And they will then sell your debt along with a whole load of others to another company. And they're going to sell your debt for about 10, between 10 and 50p in the pound. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a three grand debt, it might be sold for a maximum of 1500. Mm -hmm. So the company that now owns it, what they want to do, they want to make sure they get that 1500 back. Mm -hmm a lot lower so you you wait you wait you wait they'll send you all these nasty letters again and then as you're collecting this money which you're putting to one side Mm -hmm. you can then go with them go to them and negotiate Mm -hmm. and actually go look i'm not i can't pay all this off but how about i give you this and they'll go yeah fine because they know how much they bought it for you see ah very clever Right. So the biggest I think the best one OIA has done, there was a guy he worked with and he had one hundred thousand pounds on a credit card and he negotiated it for five. Wow. That's amazing. So If you are in trouble, don't before you go to step change or any of the, the any of the systems of advice, check OIA out. Oh, yeah. Because all the all step change and all those people, they're all um, they're all um, given kickbacks from the bank anyway. So this is completely independent, really good advice, practically. You know, it's slightly slippery. The more people that find out Mm. about it, the sooner they'll close the loop. So don't tell anyone. Just keep it to ourselves. Keep it to ourselves. Yeah, okay. Okay, Fanny, that was good. I like that. We were talking a little bit off air about um, something that I'm sure some people have heard Mm. about already. It's looming. It's not a very nice bit of alliteration. Awful April. Yeah, it's just come out today. What so, is Awful April all about then? So Awful April is, is, is um, they're saying that well, April, April's going to be awful for, and, uh, for three reasons, of biggest reasons. Mm-hmm. So the first reason is um, all the energy prices are going to go up mm-hmm. again. And that's because in August, the government are raising the cap that they have on it. It's there's a whole load of um, explanation about it all on Martin Lewis. So I'm not going to go in there now. But if you want to understand how it all works, but at the mo- in a nutshell, the companies at the moment, you know, 24 gas and electricity companies have gone bust recently. Mm. The remaining companies that are here are actually selling us gas at less than they buy it for. So they're all running to a loss. Mm. And in April, the government's going to raise the cap so that the energy companies are not losing money. But that's going to hit our wallets big time, like big time. Mm-hmm. Um, next, national insurance is due to go up. Whether Boris will decide to renege on that, I don't know. But this is the new national insurance to pay for our social care, mm-hmm. for our old people who need to go into homes, etc., which he promised he would do. And we all said we wanted him to do it. It's just bad timing, really. Mm-hmm. And we are, at the moment, we have inflation at the highest it's been for 30 years. Mm -hmm. So have you, I mean, inflation is an interesting thing. So we notice that prices go up. Mm -hmm. We've all noticed that prices have gone up. But have you also noticed how things have got smaller? (laughs) Apart from Tesco's toilet rolls. (laughs) So seriously, though. Yeah. Have a look at a well, a packet of crisps, Walker's crisps, used yep. to be 35 grams. It's now 30 grams. Has the price come down? Has it heckers like? Mars bars. Do you remember mm. you used to have the king size? Yes. Notice they've, I think they've gone now. I'm not sure. So they're mm. quite small now, but they've, they're, they're the price of the king size. Mm-hmm. So it's crazy. All these little things happening around us mm. that are making it just that little bit tougher, which mm. is why it's even more important that if you don't 
if money is not your friend, mm -hmm. if you're not close to your money, if you're dragging it around behind you, like some people drag an ang angry toddler, <laughs> you know, these people go, come on. And they tell you, no, 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 I don't want to go. Come on, we need to get there by two o'clock. No, no, I don't want to go. Anywhere. <laughs> dragging, dragging. What do you need to do to that toddler? You need to pick it up, mm. wipe its face, mm. all that snot and everything, give it a nice kiss and a cuddle. Mm. And start again and that's what you need to do with your money that's mm. you know get close to it get friendly with it it's here to help you ayn rand said she's a writer mm -hmm. she said money is simply a tool mm. and it will take you wherever you wish to go but it will not replace you as the driver oh that's lovely you see and on my website and in part, part of my coaching i work with eight money types you know how sometimes you do a quiz and they go, find out your money personality. <laughs> we, we don't do any of that. No. We have eight money types and you take the money type quiz and it will give you an idea as to which one at mm -hmm. the moment is the driver. And can you change type. personality type? That's what I need yeah. to know, Fanny. Yes. So the, the eight types, so you've got the innocent, which is the head in the sand, hope it all... The, bit like you were describing to me earlier actually mm. don't I don't really want to do it I don't want don't know what to do this is you know oh I'm a bit scared I ask people advice people don't do it. I need a partner to come along and do it all for me but I wear a smile today and I'll just deal deal with it all tomorrow that's mm. the innocent victim tried it all everything's terrible nothing's going to work out blah, 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 blah. you know my mum and dad never taught me you know, mm. all these kind of things which is you know, pretty genuine but we need mm. to move on right warrior type of action Right, going to get things done. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, Martyr. Well, if I don't do it, nobody else is going to do it. Anyway. <laughs> I've got to do this and I've got to do that. And I've got to do this and I've got to do that. I haven't got time to go and buy myself a new pair of shoes. Mm. All that kind of stuff. Don't over deliver, under charge. Mm -hmm. Freelancers. Mm -hmm. Sound familiar? Oh, very much so. We've all yeah. done it. We've all yep. done it. So yep. That's Martyr. Then we've got the fool. Mm -hmm. Um Oh, I just got paid. My client just paid me. Let's go out and buy a Gucci handbag. Oh, I didn't think about the cash flow for next month. All that, you know, leading a, a roller coaster of a, a life, um, sometimes emotionally driven, where you think you need to, you deserve more because you're feeling sad. I've had a bad week. Let's just go out and buy that and then get your post purchase depression and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But, you know, no due diligence, no detail, all that. Then we've got the creator artist. Money's not really very important to me. Um, I quite like to be rich, but then actually, you know, because there are poor people in the world and they shouldn't really have, you know, can't really have money when they haven't. Lots of conflicts, not quite sure where you stand. Again, we'll probably, you know, have a brilliant yoga course and give eight weeks for free and just pay for the last two. Yeah. You know, that's the thing as well. So a bit of a tree hugger. We love those. But also got a lovely creative side. Then we've got the tyrant. Mm. Where it's just money, 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 money. Can never have enough, never have enough, never have enough. All need to be more business, 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 business. But actually, all based in fear of having it all taken away and really just want people to like them. And it's a bit controlling and manipulative and secretive. Mm. It's a bit sad, the tyrant, really. I know this because that's what I suffer from. And then we've got the magician who is all about faith, trust and balance and has it all going on. Oh, so the magician isn't the one who can wave the wand and make all the money appear? No, the, the well, no, but the magician is just himself and makes mm -hmm. all the money appear. So you know, I talked about a financial adventure. Mm -hmm. If we if we imagine that we we're going to go on our financial adventure on a bus, mm -hmm. these are the passengers, yeah. and you you need to decide who you are going to put at the wheel. Mm. Right. So I you like can have, you know you can have the innocent at the wheel, and a lot of people. I've got a money type quiz on my website. You mentioned that, Fanny. They do that, did I? Yeah. They, if you do the quiz, a lot of people say to me, Fanny, your quiz on your website's rubbish. And I go, <laughs> is it now? And she goes, yeah, because I haven't got any active money types. None of them. And I go, well, maybe that'll give you a general idea as to who's driving your financial life right now. <laughs> maybe. Nobody. That is fantastic. I'm loving talking to you today. Now tell me, what's your website? Because I think a lot of people need, now need to go and try out your um your money type financial quiz. Money type quiz. Um, it's uh, what is my, it's fannysnaith.com. You knew you knew it, didn't you? I knew I knew it. <laughs> I knew, knew it was a familiar one. Yeah, fannysnaith.com, and anybody can do the money type quiz. I offer a thirty minute 
quick chat to see if, you know, I might be able to give you a couple of quick tips, 30, strict 30 minute chat. And then if you fancy doing some work with me after that, then we could book in a longer call. And I do um, one to one coaching, couples coaching, um, sole trader business coaching, because I'm also a certified business archetype coach. Mm. That's, a, that's a nice one. Mm. <laughs> and I have uh, an online course just for ladies, mm -hmm. which is called Loving Me, Loving My Money. I love all these, um, Fanny. I really do. Because also, as I'm sure you know, uh, you know, money is often the root of a lot of problems or bickers. It, it doesn't even have to be really deep seated in relationships. So a couple's one is is brilliant. Couples, really coaching, is, couples coaching is lovely, lovely, lovely piece of work. And I've got a little online couples course as well, which I'm just about to launch, which is a DIY because my couples coaching program is is quite a quite a large investment. Mm. But I'm going to do a little couples one you can just do a DIY on, which is quite mm. nice, actually. And it's only it's going to be for less than £100. So it's going to be... I like that. And it's also reminded me, and I'm aware that we're going to wrap soon, but actually my mum, and I know that my best friend's mum, and so I don't know if it's women of a certain generation, have always advised, myself and my best friend, have your own little pot of money to yourself. You know, it doesn't need to know about it. And it's not even a... It's kind of like it's your own little emergency fund, just in case. And I... I've only ever had this advice from my mother in hushed tones and my best friend's had that advice from her mother in hushed tones and I don't know why that is so it's oh, quite well, it, well it, 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 it's quite logical really mm. so your mum my mum will come from a certain generation mm. uh post-war mm. um and where the man was usually relied upon to earning the money um you know women were housewives stayed at home and women would be given the housekeeping money. And what the ladies would then do is they would then take a little bit to set aside. Mm -hmm. That then moved up through these, uh, the six, the fifties and the sixties and women would start putting money away for when they left. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like not a bad piece of advice really. Yeah. But, you know, we didn't have all this amazing open banking or, you know, these wonderful array of uh, financial products and services that we have now. And, you you know, the bank account would usually be the man's bank account and it would just be the one bank account. And, you know, yes, the, you know, so that have your secret pot because it was your your little piece of independence. Mm. Whereas everything else was relied upon, even though so often what's funny is that I've coached many people and where their their parents or their grandparents would be that the man would come home, give the wages to the mum and then spend most of the week down the pub. Yeah. You know, the, the lady would be the one who would be looking after the money, but the dad would be out there earning it, mm. which obviously then get gives the the lady an, an opportunity to tuck some way because the man's not sort of interested. It's very interesting mm. roles as it yes. uh, as it goes. But there are so many different dynamics. There really mm. are. I mean, it, you know, most people in a in a cup in a relationship, the one of the couple will be the warrior role, the one who mm. actually take care of the finances, and quite often the other one is the innocent. Mm. I don't want to have anything to. Oh my, my husband does that. Oh my wife does that. Mm. So the partner deals with all the finances, and that's fine. But over time. The warrior gets a little bit lonely and turn, starts moving into martyr. Well, mm. if I don't look after the money, I don't know who else is going to look after it. And you, you know, you just keep on spending, blah 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 blah, mm. you know, and all that kind of stuff. Because it's all a bit of a one-sided role. Mm. And the innocent will then start moving into victim. Oh, he's always telling me off about how much money I'm spending. And it's all quite jovial at the beginning, mm. but there's a seriousness coming into it. Mm. And the worst it can get, which is what I experienced with my husband. Mm. was you go from so you go warrior innocent martyr innocent victim mm. tyrant victim because mm. I would be in charge of the money and he wouldn't be in well, we worried about any of it mm. and I, so I'd be going right well, I'm going to put that money away and you start to become secretive and manipulative and controlling mm. and all that goes and it's not pleasant mm. so we need to and it can be recovered Oh, totally. And that's the important thing, isn't it? You know. And all any of you mm. out there who says I'm rubbish with money, please don't ever say that again. Mm. Please don't. Because it means nothing. It's just yeah. a statement that you've practiced over the years mm. that is an umbrella term for everything that's going on underneath. 
Mm. And it's not helping you. It's not protecting you from anything. It's just keeping you vulnerable and keeping you worried and keeping you away from the clarity that you need to be friends with your money. There, how about that for a second? Oh, Fanny Snaith, you are awesome. It's been absolutely fantastic speaking to you today. Thank you so very much for your time. I want to have a lovely, a quick chat with you off air as well because I've thoroughly enjoyed talking to you. If anyone wants to get in touch with Fanny, amazingly, her website is Fanny Snaith. She's super duper easy to find and I can just tell she's going to help you. Fanny, thank you so much for your time today. Okay, thanks for having me. Thank thanks you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.